Welcome back to another Good Good Labs video. In today's video, we are gonna talk about the backswing. If you guys look on tour and throughout all the Good Good guys, you'll notice everybody has slightly different backswings, but there are common fundamentals throughout each backswing, whether it's on tour or within us that will help you guys form a repeatable backswing. So, Steve? Yeah, uh, I've gone through a little bit of a backswing change and it honestly has changed my game slowly for the better, but it's, right. a, it's a slow transition. Like, I can't change it immediately. We're gonna look at his first, but then we're gonna dive into the rest of the good, good guys. Look at their backswings. Hopefully that will help you guys out. But Steve's the most recent backswing change, though. Yeah. So he's still working on it. I am, I'm still going through a change, so it's good. Awesome. We'll explain that change, what we're making. Get right into this. Before we go in to the rest of today's video and looking at the rest of their swing, I'm gonna show you a drill that I was given to form the perfect backswing. When you guys are over the ball, you're gonna get in your posture, like we explained in a previous Good Good Labs video, get into your posture, put the club across your chest here, arms like this, and what you gotta do is turn that butt end right there. That is about the position you would wanna be on your backswing. Then you can take the club up to the top here, hands across the chest here, turn that. Feel the weight go into this right side. That's a very simple drill that you can do at your house or before you're warming up to play around to golf. It'll get you in a good position. All right, let's take a look at Steve's swing. Start out here. Basically yeah. what we've been working on is for me to get a little deeper or more of a turn. It's giving Steve a lot more time at the top of his swing. It's helped him a ton. He's been playing some of the best golf I've seen. There's gonna be a lot of stuff you guys can take away from Steve's backswing because it's one of the best in the group. He's holding his balance absolutely perfect. You love to see that. If you guys do the correct backswing, you should be on balance almost every time if you guys are putting it in the correct positions because it's a reaction. So your backswing should be a reaction to your follow through. If you're doing it right, you should be on balance. Right, here's my best shot of the day. Let's see it. That was really good. That is a backswing that I would personally take a lot of notes from. Bobby has a really solid backswing too. He makes a full turn. He was in long drive. He's tried to hit the ball far, so he knows how to make a backswing that will hit the ball a lot further than the average person. The thing I do do though is I normally get inside. Right. If I have an issue, I get inside. Exactly. Yeah, initially, Bubby, what you guys will notice is he will slightly take the club inside. That's okay. Some guys still do that on tour. Not a big deal. That is a full, Bubby makes a really, really full turn. The only times Bubby gets in trouble, I believe, is when he gets this club a little bit too far inside here on the takeaway instead of keeping it right here. His turn at the top is great. Is there anything that you feel on your backswing? Micah and Ricky Fowler kind of have the same motion in the backswing. Right. That big kind of like that is what I should right. feel. Right, that's called, exactly. That's hands in, club out, what Bubby's yeah. feeling. So the hands are gonna move in while the club head stays outside here. Yeah. It doesn't do this, but we keep the club head outside. Wow. If he can fix me, he can fix you. Stay tuned, yo. Let's get Tig in here next. He's got a, like a nice compact swing. You'll see this. This is, this is a good one. We all know that Tig is a shorter back swing, more compact swing, which is really good for being consistent, but he still makes a really full turn. It's a big turn. Like, and you've told me before, my takeaway is really solid, but then sometimes it's almost like I just get disconnected. My arms kind of take over. So I've been right. kind of working on a more all the way to the top. Connect. Right, if any, like, like what Tig's saying, sometimes his take, Tig's takeaway is the best takeaway in the group. Uh, that is one checkpoint that I want you guys to look at when he's swinging is his takeaway. That's the best thing he does, but sometimes his shoulders will stop turning and his arms will keep going. So I know he's working on right now making a bigger turn and keeping his turn moving. Guys, pay attention to this takeaway. That's the one thing. You don't want to be hinging those wrists like this. This will get you disconnected. A one-piece takeaway where the arms in the body are working together is the best. So a one-piece turn to there. It's really good to copy. I mean, those divots too. You can tell a lot how somebody's hitting the ball by how square their club face is coming in. Those are perfect dollar bill divots. Let's take a look at Garrett. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, just me personally, whenever I'm swinging the golf club, I always have one little thing that I'm thinking about to get me to like really want to swing. It's like my trigger. It's like everyone has to have a little bit of a trigger. Some people's are different, but for me, I always have one little swing thought over every single shot. Right now for me, it's nothing really to do with my backswing. It's only on the way through. I'm trying to extend and keep it one 
one piece and just rotate through the ball. And I would say for like the last couple months, that's probably been my biggest swing thought. Grant just said it, but staying connected on the backswing is something that I also sometimes struggle with. Right. I get wristy here. Right, exactly. Break the wrist, and then my backswing kind of gets in a bad spot. That's one thing I do work on with Garrett, is in his takeaway, he'll sometimes just start with his hands like this, instead of turning his body and his arms at the same time. So one thing you guys can take away from Garrett is how connected he stays with his upper body and lower body. They're all moving at the same rate. So in junior golf, I was never good at golf. I would shoot every once in a while, I would shoot in the 60s and the 70s, but I was so inconsistent all over the place. I would shoot high 80s, low 80s, and then I'd have a really good round, then I'd shoot way in the 80s again. That was mainly because I was not connected at all. Plus, I weighed 130 pounds at the same height. So once I started working out and I put on some muscle, I put on some size, it allowed me to naturally just stay more connected throughout my golf swing because I got bigger and I didn't have as much room to use those wrists and those little muscles to kind of flip at it and do all right, the weird exactly. things that you don't really want to do in a golf swing. Now I'm very thankful that I'm able to stay connected because that was never the case when I was kind of growing up playing golf. That is great. And you will notice one thing too, he gathers everything on his backswing. That's one thing I wanna talk about quick, is on the backswing guys, you wanna take a moment at the top to gather and then go. We're gonna have another video on transition and impact, but in today's video on the backswing, when you get up to the top, gather everything for a second. A lot of the time slicing is caused by not completing your backswing, getting short here, and then you throw the club. Garrett makes a good full turn, it gives him time to get to the inside. You guys will notice right away, Matt, he gets more into a laid off position at the top, which means on his backswing, if this is down the line right here, Matt's club's gonna point a little more over here, which is considered laid off. Like I said from the beginning, everybody takes the club to different positions. Garrett's more down the line here, and Matt's more laid off and Tig's more across the line. So everybody's club may be in a different position at the top, but what I'm looking for is always a big turn into your right side and completing your backswing. That was a really solid backswing, guys. Everybody in the group, they're all solid golfers because nobody's doing anything really crazy at the top of their swing to make it hard to repeat. So everybody has a repeatable motion. That's the goal from the day, guys. It's making sure you're able to form a repeatable motion Telling you, this is the best thing you guys can do. Put your club across your chest and focus on turning like this. Staying in your posture. Guys, hopefully you did enjoy today's video. That was just the backswing. We're gonna have transition impact coming out. We're offering free golf instruction, not charging anything. It's for you guys to get better, trying to help you guys out. Let's get it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video.